Kevin. Uh, said, I'm a third year PhD student from Loughborough University, and uh, uh, this talk is uh, a case study I did, and the title was uh, Thermal Energy Storage uh, uh, Shifting Energy Demand Using uh, Thermal Energy Storage. We've heard from some of the previous speakers that domestic building, buildings consume uh, uh, a lot of energy. They are one of the major emitters of uh, CO2. 80% um, of the energy used in domestic buildings is actually used in heating. So if we were to meet the, some of the 2050 targets we have in terms of carbon emission, we have to do something about the heating. We could do this by electrifying heating and using some renewables, as one of the previous speakers mentioned. But is this uh, realistic, given that we know uh, that the demand for heat is considerably larger than the demand for electricity at the moment, as shown in this uh, graph here? So is it really realistic to transfer the heat demand over to the electricity grid, and what's, what's it going to do? There could be a big uh, disparity between uh, the peak and uh, off-peak demand, making it hard to uh, balance the daily supply uh, with, the, with the demand. And this is where thermal energy storage, I think, can play a big role. So in this context, thermal energy storage basically means storing uh, heat from electricity during off-peak times, and then using the stored heat uh, during peak times to meet the heating needs. So the case study involved uh, modeling um, a building uh, with two levels of thermal properties, uh, some uh, <coughs> different levels of uh, occupancy and storage uh, tanks. And uh, so the uh, answers I was seeking from the study uh, are shown here. And this graph here shows uh, what happens if you have a building with two uh, levels of thermal performance. Uh, the building with good uh, thermal perf performance loses heat very slowly, so you, the demand for heat goes down. Um, also, the, the size of the storage tank you need to be able to shift the heat, uh, demand in time reduces in size. So building uh, performance is very important. This graph shows what happens to the uh, temperature in the space during the demand shift period. For better performing building, uh, the average uh, internal temperature stays around 19 degrees with a one meter cube storage tank. And for a worse performing building, the average temperature stays around 14, which is uh, probably unacceptable for many people. This uh, graph here shows what happens if I add a, a bit of the, um, patent materials uh, into the building to provide some latent heat. And that showed that uh, there isn't a lot of improvement made to the internal temperature you get. So, um, the key findings so far are that uh, the impact of uh, thermal energy storage depends on how good the building is performing in terms of uh, energy. Occupancy doesn't have a lot of impact, and sensible uh, storage using hot water, for example, is very effective. Um, Patent materials really doesn't uh, do a lot. And using a one and half, uh, sorry, 0 0.5 meter cube storage tank, you can get roughly three hours of uh, heat demand shift with some uh, loss of degradation. These are some of the uh, work I'm carrying on with, uh, feature work from my studies. And I'd like to finish uh, with those quotes here, which illustrate how um, important storage in general is and why domestic thermal energy storage is important and, and critical and why you should support research in this area uh, whenever you can. Thank you very much.